gives you this arm unpainted and they give you an option to have it painted. You pay a little bit more. I decided not to have it painted because I want to go with a Komatsu color. I believe they paint it with a Caterpillar color. So if you want to go Caterpillar and you don't want to have to paint the arm or the cylinders, you can ask to have that when you order it, okay? Um, so what do they give you in the arm kit? So the arm will offer this uh, boom, the stick, and I believe it gives you these uh, pieces here and then a uh, bottom piece here to hold a bucket. I noticed that this is narrower, okay, than your um, Huina bucket spacing. So this here is much narrower than if you were to put a Huina bucket. So you're going to need to make some spacers. Okay, so I just cut some spacers. I had like some aluminum rod ends here and I just cut them down about two and a half millimeters each ish. And then it comes with its own little spacer that fits around this pin. And then this pin goes in here. And we'll show that a little bit later, but essentially this pin goes in and just to keep in mind, there is a hole here. You have to put something to hold this from spinning and you put the threads in, okay? If you do go with the Magum buckets, uh, then there's no modifications needed. If you're gonna be using the Huina stuff or anything other than their stuff, there's lots of modifications required. Um, so you're gonna have to make some spacers like I had mentioned. And then this goes on top here. And then you screw it in with the screws. They provide you with four screws and some extra um, spacers. Okay, so then same thing on this part here. You tie it into your bucket and then screw that in. Great, we got that covered. You might have to make some modifications to make this bottom piece work. Now, the rest of it, they do supply you with the pin to go into the center here with this uh, kit. So you have that pin there and then everything else is empty. Magum also incorporates this in their kit. So this is gonna replace the existing piece on the Huina 580. So they give you this with the screws so that your cylinders can attach to it. They also give you this little valve uh, block here. And what this does is it takes your hose, you patch it in here and then it goes into the pump. So this is a spot for it to tie into. As you can see, there's two on this side and two on that side. So those two will come up along here. One will go to this cylinder and then the next one will go to that cylinder, right? So once you have that arm assembled, really easy, just do those pieces. Now, the one thing I forgot to buy in this kit was the pins that go here, here, and here. I order them, they're like, I should have said yes, that's another option that you get with this arm. It asks you, do you want the pins to hold the cylinders? It should have been just no question. Like if you're gonna go with this arm, those pins are mandatory. You put in a three millimeter bolt and nut, but honestly, like that's kind of ridiculous. I didn't realize it until I got this and noticed that it was there, uh, that it was missing. So yeah, there you go. If you're not painted, you can paint them. They look really cool. Uh, another thing here is this piece, getting close, this is screwed in on this cylinder. So this pin here gets screwed into that cylinder. Uh, so just make sure when you're taking this apart, remember which shims go where. So the shim goes in between these two pieces, okay? Just make sure you know that and then tighten it down. Now to put these guys on, it's pretty easy. Um, all you have to do is make sure you cut the hose to the right length and then make sure this collar is uh, back here-ish, right? Just keep it behind and then slide the tube on. And I did this with my fingers. I didn't need any pliers or anything like that. Slide this on till it hits the end of the fitting here. And then you slide this little collar all the way up. So if you have nails or anything, just push it all the way up until it connects you've got your hose on. It's kind of that simple. 
They also provide you with these clips here. Okay, so there's one here, one on the other side, and then another two here. Notice that this one is twice as wide as this one. That's because this one has the two hoses, one continues on, and then the other one comes into this fitting here. Okay, the other one on the other side will come up, it'll hit that fitting, and then the other one right there. Cool. So that's how that looks. Hose lengths, I'll put the hose lengths, what I measured for the arm, okay, and the stick. So the boom and the stick. I'll give you all the dimensions of where each, uh, what each hose has to be cut to. This hose, for example, is 20 inches and a quarter, okay? So 20 inches and a quarter is the length of that particular piece of hose. And then we just need to put another collar on here and tie it into that spot right there, okay? All right, so let's grab our next piece of hose here. Okay, we wanna make sure it's completely flat. And I'm using these type of snippers, okay? And I cut it with the flat end on the piece that I want and I just snip it off. Okay, next we'll grab one of the collars, okay, so one of these little guys. I'll tell you what the spring is for later. It's for another piece of hose, but it goes inside uh, where the pump is. So let's grab one of these little guys. <clears throat> and one of the things that the guy did on the video uh, was to... Whoop, I almost lost that. Um, is take a drill bit and on one end just kind of chamfer it a little bit, right? Give it a little bit of a chamfer um, and it doesn't take much. Just gotta come in here and chamfer that little. I don't know if you can see it. What that does is it just uh, gives the that collar a little bit more of a, a smooth um, a smoothness to it so that anytime there's a, a movement and we want to have the part that you just uh, chamfered you slide the tube through that okay so this is the straight end of that piece and the reason why is like Imagine the tubes constantly going like that. Well, we want it kind of chamfered so it doesn't have a chance to rub and, you know, eat through that hose and then we have a leak, right? So, we've got our hose now and we want to put it on here. So let me bring this a little bit closer. And we're going to slide this guy on, okay? And look at this. You just have to be slow and methodical about it, okay? Starts going on slowly. And there we go, just a little bit more. Get my fingers on here. And if you do need you can always use a pair of pliers to help it along, okay? I suggest not to do it because you might actually kink the hose or cut the hose. So slowly it'll go on, okay? And right up to the edge. You can see that. And we grab our little collar and we'll slide him on. Again, this is great when you have nails. So you can push it all the way in and there you go just on now the next part is doing the length of hose that we need okay so that will go in and go through those little sleeves here and then through there and then down to here and just remember where you connect these and we'll show you that in a minute Okay, so let's move on to the servo part 
we're going to be control uh, connecting everything to the control block here. And if you look closely, okay, these little valves here open and close with a servo horn, okay. And so these servo horns have to fit just inside this little area here, okay. So you can see it's round all, all the way, but it's cut out for the servo horn. And so you'll grab the servo horn, and what you do, I've cut this one already, but essentially, okay, you stick the servo horn, a full servo horn, okay, in here, okay, so the servo is in there. You'll notice it fits just fine. It's right to the edge here, and it's right to the edge there, and it doesn't seem like it's going to slip out. Now, the book being the book says this should be 14 millimeters well 14 millimeters is that gap and if we open up our micrometer and go let's do it this way so we can show you let's get to 14 here give or take a, a smidge okay let's just say that's 14. <clears throat> this servo horn that I cut that fits exactly in there is not 14 it's smaller and if I try to do 14 in here you might see there's lots of play okay I can't fit it'll touch the other one here okay and the other one will be the same thing they'll all touch so whoever put 14 mils here is wrong that's why these instructions are a guideline, not the proper way to do it. <clears throat> Next, make sure your servos are centered. Go buy yourself a servo tester. And what you'll do is you'll connect this on the one side here, and it tells you plus and minus, okay? And we'll do that. It'll light up. And there's three different settings here. There's manual, where I can manually move the servo. If I click this button, it goes into neutral, which will put the servo in the center. And then there's auto, which it cycles the, the servo. <clears throat> okay. So let's put this in here. Again, follow the directions. It says minus plus and signal. <clears throat> and now your servo is centered. Okay. Once it's centered and we're in the neutral setting here you can unplug it and then you can put your servo horn in and then attach your servo to the top there's two screws holding it put this all now before you put it into the machine because later you're gonna have to attach this and you're gonna have to run all these lines so you don't want to be fiddling with trying to put servos and just put them in ahead of time and then we can do all the connections after okay so just to demonstrate I've already cut two of these I didn't put them in yet all I've done is I just picked one of the ends here but my little scissors up and snip okay and then make sure it's up against here and there you go all nice and tidy and then all we got to do so we've done that get your servo tester plug it in click to the middle make sure we've got this set up and listen to the servo center there we go servos in the center position all ready to go Make sure you do that to all three. This is important because if you do not center it now and you do it later when you've attached it and you've already got all the servos in here attached, it's going to keep the valve open to a certain point and you're going to have to do a little bit of adjustment. It's a real pain in the butt. Do it now. Everything's straight. Everything's perfect. This is going to save you a lot of time and headaches. Okay. So make sure if you don't have one of these, get one of these. They're like five bucks. Um, and then, yeah, now that you have all the horns, you can put all the horns in, okay, and then everything will line up nicely, and then you can put your servos on, attach them, make sure that there's no binding, and make sure this is all straight, okay, we want to make sure these are straight, 
so that when we go to configure our transmitter, there's no issues. Cool. Okay, now that you've completed all your line hookups, hopefully it went pretty smooth. All right, this one here, um, I bent this fitting up a little bit, so just get a pair of pliers and slowly turn it up uh, to a bit of an angle because if you do get the pin that goes through here, you wanna screw it down after, so you're gonna need a little bit of room. And with this one here, you just bend this down and put that screw in. But this is why I did it, because there's really no room. You can see, there's very little room to maneuver a screw in there if you have to put the screw in. Um, so yeah, we bend it up a little bit. You can always bend it back down. Just make sure it doesn't leak. If it leaks, then you're probably gonna have to put some more thread sealer um, or Loctite. And then going down, everything's clamped down there. And then into the four. Um, spots here and then these will be routed into the machine and then this pin will go through from the existing one and then this piece here will replace the one that's already there we will run the hoses in a bit here <clears throat> okay this here if we can get a little bit of zoomage I use the screw that uh, came with this kit so I put that in there uh, just to hold it this temporarily, uh, so these uh, shims are being used here because that's what came with the kit, as well as those two shims. Uh, right now I'm just using an M3 screw. Uh, I think it's like a 16 millimeter uh, with a nut on the end just as a temporary thing until I do get my actual pins that are supposed to go here. And yeah, so next we'll be adding this into the machine. That's a little blurry, huh? There we go. So that's what it looks like. And you can put your decals uh, or graphics on there if you like. But that is the arm pretty much assembled. <clears throat> Down here, you'll have to put on your own uh, quick coupler or bucket, uh, however you want. Also, just know in the future, if you do want to have like a, another set of attachments, let's say you want to do the uh, jackhammer or you want to do that vibrating compactor that I've built or a third arm uh, or just to be able to unhook the quick coupler like if it's an uh, electronic one you are gonna have to run a couple wires up along here back inside and then an ESC just for that right so an ESC to connect so that we can have whatever motors are being used there so that they can uh, function cool Thank you guys so much for joining. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's just part one of a multi-part series. Uh, we'll have another video next week on the continuation of building this kit. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get to your answers quickly. Thanks so much for watching and hope you enjoy RC.